Good morning, good night, and good afternoon, whatever it is where you are. My name is Bellamy, and today we're going to be doing the garden update, patch notes, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be going through because just recently, a couple days ago, we got an announcement from Gamigo on Twitter that we're going to be getting the Archage Garden of the Gods update. We've just been referring to it as the Gardens update coming from Korea, and we're going to be getting that on the 11th of June, so way sooner than some of us anticipated. When people have been asking me recently, I said anywhere from about one month to three months, somewhere along those lines, I would say, which is great news because, you know, since the release of Arcage Unchained, Gamigo has been pretty lackluster on their, their churning out of the, the Korean updates and keeping us up to date with that, so we've fallen a little bit behind on the Korean expansions. Um, before Arcade Gen Chain, we were pretty up to date, we were only like a month or two behind, so we've fallen a few months behind now, so we're a little bit further behind, but nevertheless, we're finally getting the garden update, and we're going to be slowly working our way back up towards Korea by the looks of things, so awesome, we're getting the garden update, a lot of us have seen mo most of the stuff that's coming out of Korea already, and we know what to expect, because, you know, this is a Korean game, we see everything in the Korean side of things before it makes its way over to the west, so nevertheless, some of you probably already seen most of the stuff that we're going to cover in today's video, but we're going to go through and read through this, uh, these patch notes and get a bit more of a detailed explanation of the different changes and things that are coming. So, our cliff notes here, uh, we got the garden, which is the new zone. Uh, we have new equipment, we have tier 5 Hiram, tier 3 Aeronaut, and tier 2 Aeronaut Cloaks. Equipment specialization, which is super interesting, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, territory and castle changes, not th anything crazy, but cool changes nevertheless. And then we have new ancestral skills, and I love skill balance changes. That's always good. Any skill balance stuff is always fun, new changes to the game, and I love it no matter what, whether it's nerfed to my class or not. So, I'm going to go through. Garden. Looks great. Uh, it looks like it's a pretty big zone, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, who knows? We'll see. It depends on, you know, what content's in the zone. I know there's world bosses and things like that, so... We'll see just how that zone's going to play out. It hopefully will make for some interesting PvP. I know it's going to be a pretty heavy PvP zone, and I know there's going to be some interesting stuff probably up the... Like, if there's world bosses in each of these uh, little side areas here, and the only entryway into those areas is through these huge corridors, that's going to be some interesting, super cool, like, Friedrich-style fights through choke points and stuff. So, it might be a really cool zone for PvP. I mean... That's pretty much what they're setting it up for, right? Cross-server PvP uh, between factions, which will be really fucking awesome on some days and really shitty on some other days. Because, you know, it's random what you get in the in the, in the the zone. Um, for those of you... We'll read it just ahead in the patch notes here. But basically, it's cross-server, cross-realm. Uh, it's a cross-realm zone. And it can have three different factions. And it could be, like, uh, the, the West faction from Tyrannos. They're talking NA servers. Um, the West server from Tyrannos. It could be the... It could be the West from Halnak. That's that's EU. What am I talking? I'm just spitting off server names. It could be the West from Win, and it could be the West from Yagen, right? Like you'd be three completely same faction from three different servers, and everyone be friendly for a, however many days it stays like that. And another day it could be like two pirate factions from one ser from two different servers, and then a, an East faction from a different server. So it can make for some really crazy, fun, like, alliance PvP setups, and I'm just excited because it'll be cool being able to play with people uh, that watch my content and hang out from different servers and things like that. I think it's going to be super exciting and super fun. As long as it's not laggy. As long as the cross-realm servers have no issues, and as long as there's no problems, it's going to be super fun. Alright. Uh, is an area without housing zones. It is tropical, arid, and sub-arctic sub -arctic in different areas so that the climate depending on what you're growing changes in the different areas i don't know why you'd want to be really growing stuff there but nevertheless um you enter the garden by passing through the garden gate located in the navel of the world which is north of the uh, hall of warriors or towards location is uh northwest of the hall of warriors yep there we go uh, who will let you travel to the garden or the after going through the gate you will be teleported to the gatekeeper's hall upon entering the first time you will unlock an entry for your teleport book cool um Inside the Gatekeeper's Hall, you'll find five portals that teleport you to certain regions within the garden. Cool. Alright. We have a conflict peace cycle. So we have 10 minutes conflict, 50 minutes of war, and 60 minutes of peace. Cool. It's pretty standard for any normal zone. 50 minutes... Oh, an hour for PvP, and then an hour to peacefully farm if that's what you're into. Awesome. I like it. It'd be cooler if it was like 30 minutes of peace, but nevertheless, at least 60 minutes lines up with people's buffs and stuff if they want to loot drop and then farm or something i don't know okay what do we got 
Inside the garden, there are five camps, each connected to the Gatekeeper's Hall. You travel through these. Uh, um, you travel to these from the Gatekeeper's Hall. The Queen's Innis Portal is unlocked after you complete the main story quest line up to a certain point, the start of Chapter Four. So that's this one here in the middle. So one, two, three, four. We get each of these uh, by default. You're able to portal to them, and then the final one, which is the one here in the center, which is generally, is presumably, going to be the best portal if there's any world bosses in kind of this area. Um, actually, probably only this one, to be honest. This one seems like it's closer to this than... Anyway, whatever. If there's a world boss in the center here, then I guess that has an advantage for that. Whatever. We'll, we'll find out which portals end up being most used when it comes to navigating the, the garden most effectively. But nevertheless, cool. We got five portals into the zone. Super interesting. Navigating within the garden. You cannot use hereafter world gates to move within the garden. Okay. Inside the garden, merchants will sell teleportation scrolls. Okay. So we got four different teleportation scrolls, frozen ice, snowfields, falling autumn, birthplace of the stars. Um, so you'll have to buy some of these scrolls and that'll be these four different locations, presumably. But we don't have a portal scroll for the uh, Queen's Innis, which is the Santa portal area here. So cool, interesting. Um, annoying that we have to use these scrolls and take up four inventory slots having a stack of those, but nevertheless, whatever. Um, cool. During wartime, four bosses will appear throughout the garden. These bosses despawn when war ends. Upon killing these bosses, there is a chance for the following items. Garden Boss Enhancer. It gives 20,000 boss XP. Alright, so I'm assuming that's only for world boss equipment. Hopefully that's for Aeronaut, because I'm working on an Aeronaut ring. And I'd like to be able to get, you know, win a couple of those and get some for my ring maybe, but nevertheless. Alright. Glorious Awakening Scroll, rank 4. So that's is a tier 4 to tier 5 scroll. So Awakening your hero from tier 4 to tier 5. Presumably only one of them can drop. Um, Even Glow Lunar Gem, which is the Lunar Gems you get from completing Kadoom currently to make the uh, the Walmart versions of the the special Even Glow Gems or whatever they're called. Um, and then a Gold Crate can drop. So presumably if a Gold Crate drops, it's for everyone. Maybe same with Lunar, Lunar Gem too, the Even Glow. Maybe everyone gets one, maybe. Uh, and we'll have a look at the boss locations here. Okay, so it shows us the locations. Oh, yeah, no. So we got one down here. There's a big Minotaur. This guy also kind of looks like... I don't can't really tell. It's bad. Okay, we got... He's up in the north. And we got this dragon snake thing in the... Just there next to Queen Zinnis. And then this guy is up in the top left. So there's none down here. I wonder what's down there. Um, we have these four... Okay... Daily quest, Devotion of the Spirit. You can pick up the quest from any spirit at any of the four locations. So, one, two, three, four. Um, you can get this quest from this little uh, pixie. Scout the garden to earn points through various activities. So, now this is super interesting. I think this will be really fun. It's basically a, a daily quest that is like PvP, basically. Or just, if you're really not into PvP, you can farm some mobs or fish or whatever in peace. But, here we go. Alright, so we'll look at this in a sec, because we they should have done this in a different order, because this it shows you what you get points for for the quest, but essentially it says you start with zero points when you get the quest, and you have to get X amount of points to get X rewards. Um, and these you get these amount of points for doing just AFK in the zone, uh, or doing something in the zone, killing monsters, you get X amount during war and conflict, killing a hostile player, gathering vegetation, so flowers that are in the zone, and fishing, which you get 10 for. Um... No points can be earned while you're in a safe zone. Upon death, your score is reduced by 2,500. Uh, when you kill a hostile player with a higher rank than yourself, your score is increased by 2,500. Monster kill points are awarded based on the amount of nearby party members, up to 5. So if you have more than 5 party members, you're not going to get the, uh, the rewards of killing monsters, so you can't do this in a raid. Um, you do not receive any points over time if your rank is 6 or above. So once you get above rank 6, and there are 12 ranks... You will not get points just by passively being in the zone, AFK, or whatever it is you're doing. Um, when you kill a boss monster, all participants receive 5,000 points. So if you kill a boss, that's really good. Uh, you can craft a buff to protect yourself from losing points when you die, and it increases the amount of points you get from killing monsters by 50%. So uh, the buff is this thing here. You grants the elemental protection buff. Points gained from killing monsters increase by 50%. Your points are not decreased upon death. Lasts for 30 minutes. Uh, it can only be used while the quest is active, and this is the crafting recipe, so it's five Dawn Lake Essence, and then three of each of the flowers that are going to grow in the zone. So I don't know how abundant these are going to be in the zone, but there are ways to grow these later on your land, if that's something you're interested in doing. 
uh, we'll see that down below. So here's the quest rewards. You see there's 12 stages and essentially there are, you know, 2,500 points for the base reward and then 9,000 for the bottom one. So if you, you know, start the quest and then just kill two world bosses with your faction, you've done the quest. You get 5,000 for each and you'll be done. So that's super easy and killing mobs is not going to take very long if you don't die. As long as you take one of these things, if you if you think you're at risk of dying, just take one of these uh, Blessing of the Spirits and yeah, whatever. Should be pretty easy. Um, and you get anywhere from 15 to 60 Garden Hero Infusions, which is the new tier of infusion, I assume. And then we have Tier 5 Awakening Scrolls. So you get 60 scrolls for getting rank 12. And I assume you probably need like 100 to 150 for an Awakening Attempt. Just based on the, the increase in scrolls you need previously, it's always either doubled or tripled. Um, and we need 50 for the current scrolls. The next tier of scroll, you, I would assume you need either 100 or 150 of each of them uh, of them to, to actually have an attempt. But we'll see. Uh, that's just my assumption. I don't know for certain. Uh, but presumably we need more than 50 if 60 is the amount you can get from this quest. But never mind. Um, you also will get three gold crates if you get rank 12, two soul tempers, and then four loon tempers. Uh, that's a really good quest. Um, that's a lot of rewards, holy crap. Um, so 60 infusions, 60 scrolls, a gold crate, and that's just for one daily. And they're combining all the other hero dailies into weeklies, so it's not like this is just going to add on to your daily amount of crap that you have to do. It's actually just going to be one fun quest for you to go out and complete and you know your other hero stuff you'll just complete once a week and get them out of the way so that's cool if that's something that you're interested in doing um garden introduces a new type of hero infusion uh the infusions cost 60 labor to open and can be used on glorious or higher equipment so you can only use these on tier 4 or tier 5 armor or weapons hero that is uh the eternal infusion is an ultra rare proc all right so we have if we look down here, we got infusion can be acquired by opening garden box on the daily quest. Yeah, eternal grade infusions can also be attained as an extra rare drop from monsters within the garden. Okay, um, there is no way to convert current infusions to garden hero infusions. All right, so we have the divine one, which gives three thousand experience. Now to put put that into perspective, the current celestial ones that you get from the uh, I can't remember what they're called, but the blue infusions. Uh, the Celestial ones, which is the best ones you can get from that, I think give 1,400 XP. So this is more than double. And then we have the Epic ones, which is presumably the Divine and Epic are probably like equal weighted chance. I'd say the Divine's probably like 60-70% actually, to be fair. Um, but either way, you're getting either double or, you know, over triple the XP from the Divine and Epic. And then if you get an Eternal, you get... 400k xp okay that has to be like a 0.1 percent chance because that's insane that's so good xp if you proc some of these like oh my god all right there will be three new plants added in the garden the lily of the valley the petunia and the what the white peony or uh, yeah i don't i don't even want to attempt to say that again to be honest uh, these flowers can be found in new alchemy recipes all right so uh, I have no idea what to make of this map, but I'll leave a link to this in the description if this is something you're interested in. I have no idea. This is a safe area, I guess. This is a safe area also, so I guess you can grow and plant or pick stuff in those areas. Same with these areas. Sure. <clears throat> cool. Alright, whatever. No idea, but let's move on. Uh, there will also be new fishes added to the garden. Bluestone fish, needlefish, armored fish, and silver shark. You can process these fish into dawn-like essence or use them to make new cooking recipes. So, uh, straight off the bat, we get the dawn-like essence for the, the flask that we need earlier for the to protect your shit while you're doing the daily. These are just bait fish, I would assume, since they're dawn-like essence. But let's see, what have we got? Uh, these items can be crafted at a new workbench within the garden. So we got um, Improved Judged Longing, basically, which is a last crafting. I don't know if that's what it'll actually be called, but... Uh, basically increases your resilience or toughness by X amount and restores health when you're attacked. Same as Judged Longing, just slightly better. We have a Rank 8 Small Healing Potion. and So this is just new ranks of the, the regular green, red, purple, and blue health and mana potions. We got... 13% of max health instantly, 13% uh, 1.3 max health over 10 seconds on the the bummy ones, and then we have slightly better um, health and mana restore on the 
the, the the new health potion. So just to put that in perspective, the current max rank ones are the Alluvian Loves, which most people don't even use, but it's 37% of your max health when you pop it, and this one is 42%, so it's 5% better. Nothing crazy, but it's whatever. Um, these are I'm excited for is the sandwich and the soups. These give 50% of your max health and mana over 4 seconds. Uh, the max health ones are really good for tanks who have tons of max HP and it takes like fucking forever for them to heal if they want to use like sandwiches and shit. Um, and the 50% mana is really good for Iris Mages who just want to, you know, eat one soup and have a lot of mana return and not have to eat like 40 soups or pop flasks or take all your armor off and pop flasks or some shit. And then we have Blessing of the Spirits, which is that new flask above that you need to pop to protect yourself if you're doing the quest solo or whatever it is you might be doing. All right, mechanics of the garden. The garden is a unique place with several new and uni unique mechanics in the game. Inside the garden, you'll encounter hostile forces from all servers. Each faction will be classified as their own. Example, Exal Alexander Nuia. Yep, we already read about this. Three factions will be paired against each other in the garden instance. Every X amount of days, these pairings will be changed. I, yeah, I would assume it's like three days four days or something like that but we'll see um <clears throat> example alexander nuia halnak nuia and Bellstrom pirates we in the same garden instance but all three are hostile to each other oh okay so if you end up with okay that's cool i like that you're always hostile to the other factions okay that's something that i didn't know so if you get all three like three west factions um then yeah you're not going to be yeah, that's really cool. You're not going to be all, like, friendly and have a boring couple of days. You're all going to be fighting each other. So that's super cool. Um, anyway, <clears throat> there are four re respawn bases in Nui's Nui that you can spawn at when you die. When you respawn the base, the location is where you die. These respawn bases are shared between all factions in the garden, but you can quickly move between them by using the resurrection tree in the these bases. I see. All right. So tier 5 Haram, this is, a, this is a quick glimpse at what some of them look like. This is plate on a male, this is cloth on a female, and presumably leather on a male. So, you know, I like the cloth, I think it looks good. I think that the unsymmetricality, is that a word? I don't like that these aren't symmetrical, uh, it kind of triggers me. I like the black and I like the gold, it looks good. But just cut this off here. Why does it have to be uns just, uh, asymmetrical? That's what I was going for. Um, anyway, whatever, it's just, it's just a black, it's just a reskin version of the other armors, let's be honest, it's nothing, I mean, the face is different and the shoulders are a bit added, but it's mostly just a recolored version of the tier 4 armor, and to be honest, I kind of liked the white and blue of the tier 4, but nevertheless, cool armor, we'll see how it actually looks in game on my character, I'll, I'll, I'll might like it more, who, see, who knows, <clears throat> Alright, you can acquire this gear by awakening tier 4 Hiram of a mythic or higher grade. Awakening the item will remain the same grade as it was before, so tier 4 mythic will go to tier 5 mythic, eternal tier 4 to eternal tier 5. Um, as with all other awakenings, all your image items, lunar gems, tempers, and stuff will remain. Now, I'm uncertain if the XP amount required for tier 4 to tier 5 it remains the same, or if it'll actually increase the cost. If it increases the cost that would be bad because it means that someone that has eternal will get eternal for free without having to i don't know i i'm assuming it doesn't it doesn't say whether it does or not but i'm assuming it doesn't because of this because it would be fucking stupid if it does but uh let's just go ahead and assume that it doesn't increase the the xp cost at all because the xp cost is already kind of ridiculous and yeah it would kind of put a lot of people at a disadvantage if they did increase the cost and it still remains this yeah so anyway we're gonna move on i'm assuming it doesn't increase but nevertheless all right t5 hiram has a new synthesis effect it sorry it has no new synthesis effect it just increases the item level and total stats this puts the stats equal to tier one erinor so the stats equal to tier one erinor means the uh the actual like base dps or magic attack or healing power or fizz and magic defense of an armor item <clears throat> It's not actually any of the other stats, because if anyone knows anything about the game, you actually know that the synthesis effects of a hero on tier 4 actually is better than synthesis effects of a tier 2 Erinor. You actually get, like, for example, if you have a, a tier 2 Erinor at X grade that's equivalent to tier 4 hero, the crit damage roll on a... Forgive me. The crit damage roll on an Erinor is actually lower than the crit damage roll on an uh, uh, on a Hiram. So 
that's kind of stupid, but nevertheless, we need a new tier of hero, uh, Eren, or so maybe that'll fix it. So, new scrolls, I'm not gonna read exactly what these are, we, we get the gist, they're new scrolls. You guys can have a look at this if you want. So we got tier 3 Eren or armor, this is presumably cloth? It could maybe be leather, but it has a hood, so I'm assuming cloth. Garden brings us another tier of Aeronaut gear. You can acquire this gear by awakening tier 2 Aeronaut of Mythic grade or higher. After awakening the item, it will remain at the same grade it was before. Mythic tier 2 goes to Mythic tier 3, Eternal tier 2 to Eternal tier 3, etc. As all as will all other awakenings, all your Im image items, Lunar Gems, Tempers, etc. will remain. Tier 3 Aeronaut has no new synthesis effect. It just has an increase on the item level and total stats. This puts er uh, the stats equal to tier 1 world boss equipment. So that means like... The Black Dragon weapons and uh, I think Cherubdis and stuff like that are on that level as well. And then we have the scrolls for those. Again, you guys can check those out if you want to see the crafting mat. Actually, let's just let's just have a little peek at the crafting mats. Um, wait, what do you need here? Crafting recipe? Dazzling Archim Ball for the... Wait, for the air? Okay, sure. But this is not what we want because anyone with an Aaron or armor like weapon is probably going to have a really good temper so they want to use this one so it doesn't uh mess up their tempers because i'm assuming this one messes yeah see successful awakening causes equipment with tempering above plus 20 to lose up to plus minus two points but won't drop the item below plus 20 so this one is the one you need to make if you have an aeronaut weapon or something and it doesn't cost anything it's so cheap what the fuck wait unless these are just really difficult to get dazzling oh shit i didn't even look at the arkham cost oh dang okay so Dazzling Archeum Ball times three. You need like 600 fucking Sunlight Archeum. Oh my god. Okay, and that's a what chance? <laughs> oh my god. Good luck, Aeronaut people. Fuck you. Alright. Um, Aeronaut Awakening Scroll. So this is for our Tier 2, tier two Aeronaut Cloak. Um, now, I'll read through this. Uh, the method to obtain Aeronaut Cloak has been changed. So previously, you know you awaken up to Iron Ad, and then you have to craft into Aeronaut, and you would lose your stats. Basically... What this means now is once you get to Ironad's uh, cloak, you'll actually have to awaken it into Aeronaut cloak, which is bad because it'll cost honor and it's not as easy to do. But it's good because if you have the perfect stats on your Ironad and you upgrade it to Aeronaut, it will keep those perfect stats. And then again into tier two as well. So you keep your perfect stats. So if you, for me, for example, if I have an Ironad cloak and I was reluctant to awaken to Aeronaut because I had intelligence stamina resilience and then my magic crit damage my four perfect rolls and i didn't want to awaken to Aaron, or sorry upgrade to erin or currently because i would potentially lose those stats and not get the right ones again because it's stupid um they're fixing that so that you can awaken and have your stats from the previous grade so that's really really good it means like people like me that have been sitting at ironad because they were reluctant to go to erin because of that same reason you can basically guarantee your stats. It's just going to cost you a lot of honor, presumably. So we got the Iron Egg Cloak Awakening Scroll, which is the one I'll be using. It's going to cost you, what's that, for 36k honor per attempt. Some Moonlight Archeum and an Ipnish Scroll Blessing. And then we got this one, which is going to cost you 72k honor per attempt. Um, some Moonlight Archeum, an Ipnish Blessing, and some Cloud Spawn Fabric. So... Yeah, it's going to be quite costly for a 25% chance success uh, rate with a 5% fail stack. But it's good because you keep your stats, in my opinion. I, you know, I don't like the awakening on the scroll stuff at all, uh, on the, the cloak stuff at all, but whatever. Nevertheless, it, it's fine. Okay, equipment specialization is a new mechanic that further enhances weapons and armor. Specialization can only be applied to items above certain grades. Okay, so it is done through a consumption of synthesis experience. The amount of experience required depends on the equipment type and the specialization level. Leveling up an item requires you use a combination of synthesis experience, gold, and labor. Details can be found in the tables for each step uh, below for each step. Okay, so this basically means you can specialize your weapon, enhancing its power by consuming XP. So you can say you have uh, an Eternal at zero XP. And it will cost you like, uh, I don't know, see we can see here, required XP, one th like uh, 1.8 million. You could either feed it to 1.8 million and it'll probably downgrade to Mythic, presumably. Or you can, you know, you'll have to feed it to 1.8 million and then spend that XP to enhance it. Um, and it'll cost you labor and, uh, and gold. So 
Essentially, that's the gist of it. Let me read this here. For weapons, it will increase the amount of bonus damage you deal slash amount of bonus healing you do versus certain armor types. Um, for armor, it increases your resistances uh, against the weapon's counterpart. Okay, so essentially, we got here, we have the different weapon types. So, we have all of these weapons are now going to be slashing. Um, great axes and axes are going to be the only crushing type, and bows are going to be the only piercing type. And then we have two new additional types, which is scepter and staff, which is destruction, and club and great club, which is mystical. Now, essentially, the way this works is very similar to our previous system. It's just got a bit more intricate now. So, for example, um, mystical is our healing stuff. So, um, if you're healing someone in cloth, they're going to get four times the amount of healing, or you know, forty percent more. I I would assume that means. And someone in leather is going to get 20% more, and then someone in plate is going to get no increase or decrease at all. And then we have something like destruction, which is the damage type of magic, so magic damage weapons, so Star Scepter, is going to deal 4 times or 40% more damage against plate, 10% or whatever damage against leather, and then no additional damage against cloth. And then we have like our piercing weapons, which is going to be bows only, are going to be doing 4 40% more to cloth, or four times, whatever this ends up being. No additional to leather, and one additional to plate, which is interesting. But that's cool. Then we have crushing, which is our axes and great axes, are going to be doing three times, or 30% to leather and plate. So that's probably going to be the way to go. I mean, axes and great axes are definitely going to be way more used than they already are when this comes out, I feel like. But nevertheless, we have slashing, which is going to give us 40% to leather, and one or ten percent to cloth. So all of these other weapons: Nodachi, sword, katana, Nodachi. So I say, dagger, sword, katana, Nodachi, great sword, short spear, long spear. Um, yeah. So rip long spear uses. Uh, you were in a good spot before with your slashing, and essentially this does the same thing as before. But yeah, you're. Uh, yeah, you're no longer a, a smart boy. I, I mean, it's whatever. I think axes are definitely. Axes and great axes is definitely going to be where it's at. I think people care more about doing more damage to leather and plate, even though, in my opinion, slashing is probably the way to go. Okay, so we got here below. I should have read this first. We have nothing, which means no bonus damage and healing. Oh, and low, medium, medium, high, and then high bonus. It doesn't give us a percentage or anything. I'm assuming it's 40%, 10%, etc., etc., and that would just rely, uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Not all gear can be specialized, only the following items can utilize this new system. Every specialization level has the amount of effectiveness. Level 1, level 2 gives the same amount as level 9 to 10. Okay, so we have tier 5 hero, can go all the way to 10. We have Abyssal Library, tier 2, Black Dragon, uh, Leviathan, Cherubdis, and Anthelon Soft can only go to plus 4 specialization. Um, that's alright, that's only armor in most cases, other than Black Dragon stuff. Uh, but we do have Furious Black Dragon. So Furious Black Dragon can go to plus 10. The Tier 2 Leviathan can go plus 10. Tier 2 Cherubdis can go plus 10. And Tier 2 Anthelon can go plus 10. And then obviously uh, Eranor can go plus 10 as well. So that's cool. Um, the armor limits are slightly different. They're 2 and then 5. So they can't go super high. So that's cool. Uh, they, people are going to be a lot less tanky I think in this patch. So uh, I mean no that's not true. Um, I take that back. It's I, I it, There's a few different ways this could fall, but essentially, people are going to be tankier against some people and way squishier against others. So this is cool. That just means that rolls are more important again. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we don't get too much into that. We're just going through the patch notes. Okay. Synthesis experience required. Specialization level. All right. So we're looking at anywhere between three hundred seventy-two thousand, which is nothing, to basically four million almost. Holy crap. Alright. That's going to be a lot. Uh, yeah. That's a lot. Like a lot. Jesus Christ. Alright. So, a total of 20, 20 million um, to get all of them. To get Specialization 10. So, if anyone has got a Specialization 10, like, Eternal Staff or something, that motherfucker has grinded. But to be fair, getting XP is probably going to be a lot easier with the garden update and getting all those new juicy infusions. So maybe less. And then we have the Aeronaut specialization, which is this amount of XP, which is eh, it's a fair bit of gold to get all those specializations, but whatever. Okay, we have the castle territory changes. So essentially this is uh 
new features for the castle stuff. So we have the Guardian Altar. When a hero prays at the Guardian Altar, a caretaker NPC will spawn. The hero can deliver a protective shield activator to this caretaker and he will spawn a protective bubble around the castle's steamy territory oasis. So this is the uh, the oasis here where you can sit in AFK and get labor. So it puts a bubble around to protect those people. Uh, the protective bubble will last for 6 hours and prevents any entry from inside. The bubble only prevents entry. Ranged attacks can still go through it. So you're telling me that a Maledition Mage can just stand here and still kill everyone with crashing waves? Cool. Um, when you're inside the bubble while you have the territory bathing suit equipped, you will you will heal for 750 health per 5 seconds. Alright, that's not enough, but whatever. Sure, th this won't make a difference, but yeah, yep, cool. Well, I love it. Um, at least it's a little bit more difficult, I guess. If you want to really protect your people that are AFK in this thing, I guess you can do it properly now, so whatever. Only heroes can upgrade territory buildings in advanced territory buildings. Yep, sure. Uh, yep, that's the building materials, whatever. Advanced farmhouse. Yes, let's see. When upgrading a farmhouse to an advanced farmhouse, all current functionality will remain. After successfully building an advanced farmhouse, a master biologist will spawn. From this biologist, you can pick up a new quest. Uh, let's see. The, it's in the garden. You collect garden specimens and you get an unidentified garden seed territory contribution. Okay. So, you get, you take the garden specimen and you get unidentified garden seeds and territory contribution. So, a small bundle of seeds obtained through the numerous sample study by the garden biologist. When used, you can acquire one of the following items. So, you get one of the seeds that you can then plant on your land at a later date. So, these are the seeds that are, that are found, or flowers that are grown and found in uh, the new zone, the garden, and used to craft the new stuff. So... You're going to have to get these if you want to craft the new flasks or that new uh, pot yourself that protects your shit while doing your daily. Uh, so this will be quite important, I feel. And then we have these seeds can be planted on your own personal farms. Yep, cool. Advanced territory outposts. When upgrading the outpost, all current functionality will remain. After successfully building uh, the purify... Okay. So that replacing the purif pur uh, purification kill quest. Um, and it's just going to be 50 mobs now instead of 100 mobs. And it is going to grant infusions, 50 territory pence, 1 territory coin, 100 honor, and 10 territory contribution. So it's mostly the same, except you get honor and contribution now. I don't know if you got contribution before, but uh, yeah, you definitely get, you definitely didn't get honor. So just get a little bit extra honor, and it's not quite as AIDS. So that's cool. Um, so this is the flask for putting this bubble around the, the oasis. That's whatever. Advanced workshop. Um, let's see. When upgrading the workshop, all current functionality will remain. After successfully building an advanced workshop, an advanced workshop, sorry, workbench will appear. This workbench is used to craft the Awakening Scrolls for a liberated Eranor. Um, the territory resource supervisor will also appear. After a minimum of 48 hours, this supervisor will request resources. Heroes have to accept this request within one hour. If they fail, they will be asked again at least one hour later. When a hero activates the resource quest, the territory resource, resource box will be activated. A daily quest will appear which rewards the player for turning in the wanted resource. The, the rewards for this daily quest are territory pants and territory contribution. The resource box will stay open for one hour during which there is no limit on the amount of deposits a player can make, but the daily quest can only be completed once. Subsequent deliver, uh, so deliverers will reward the players with additional territory contribution, 15 contribution per delivery. For 10 contributions that are made within this one hour, the territory income will increase by 1,000 gold up to a maximum of 5,000 gold. Okay, that's interesting. Um, kind of shitty, but interesting. I'm not going to talk about why it's shitty right now, but uh, the, the, the resources requested will be you know, the Rory Waters or the Burning Logs of the Zone, whatever. Interesting, cool, whatever. Yeah, I don't like it, but nevertheless. Um, we have the balance changes of the Sinister, uh, sorry, Sinistone Yinistia Faction Competition. The rules of this quest have been changed. Thank you, Exit Lag, I appreciate that. Um, we get Blue Salt Bonds, we now get 3 and 300 Honor Points. Cool, increase movement speed by 12 seconds after destroying a Purified Lightstone. Purified Lightstone's untouchable timer has been reduced from 1 minute to 30 seconds to 1 minute. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's to 1 minute. Okay, got it. Um, after destroying a Purification Lightstone, the global message will be displayed upon destruction. Cool. Unable to translate while well. the power maintenance... 
time of guard tower I, that makes uh, not nah, no nah, not doing it shield adjustments the extra physical and magic defense has been removed from Hiram and crafted shields this has been done so that shields of the black dragon sorry shields such as the black dragon shield and abyssal library shield gain more viability to compensate for this loss the base defense of shields has been increased as a result Hiram and crafted shields will have slightly reduced defense and abyssal library black dragon will be slightly increased that's cool so basically if you're a cloth raid breaker right now you'd have a good time if you were using a library shield because you don't have the weapon swap to do the pull and i don't know what black dragon shield does but i don't think anyone's getting that anytime soon so you can look all about that i don't know shit about shields but this does mean that shield defense penetration rate and shield defense penetration is going to be better because i know that the amount of shield defense uh penetrated is based on the the flat amount here not the equip effect because this is added after the fact it's not generated as if it's part of the shield so essentially yeah essentially you're going to be penetrating more defense on people with shield defense penetration so if you're a two-hand melee or a two-hand mage you're going to be penetrating more magic and fizz defense which is cool um not good for shield users but yeah cool i like it Cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the amount of points acquired at level 55 has been adjusted. The total amount of skill points has been increased from 18 to 20. Fuck yes! Skills with a requirement of 5 points uh, will be increased to 6. No one cares. Um, all passive skills will be required... Sorry, all passive skills will require one more skill point. Yikes. Uh, that could be interesting, but... Sure. Okay, alright. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, that's, oh, okay. That's, uh, okay. Okay, alright, sure, okay, anyway. Shadow play, we got pinned down, no longer requires three skill points. Alright, that's cool, drop back, including ancestral version, now requires three skill points. Okay, so that's good, that's really good. Because that means that people like Death Wishes can't just take, like, backdrop and shadow smite, they actually have to go a few points in. And same with, like, uh, Fanatics and shit. They can't just get Backdrop and take, like, two points in Shadow Play and get, like, the value out of it. So that's good. But now they have free more skill points. So they can still take it. But it just means they don't have more free skill points for other skill trees or whatever. Anyway, um, Occultism Absorb Life Force includes the Ancestral version. The target's received healing reduction has now been increased from 60% to 90%. Damn. And the same deal with Innovate. Um, healing effectiveness reduction has been increased from 60 to 90%. Alright, we have the Battle Rage Quake Ancestral. The first first attack snared targets are shaken for three seconds has been removed. Well, good night Quake attack. Uh, no one's going to be using that anymore, except for maybe in raids just for the AoE damage. But you're not going to be able to combo with that anymore. So, uh, Lightning Triple Slash, back at it again. Wait, does that mean that people are going to be doing Lightning Triple Slash, Rapid Strike, Animation Cancelling again? Damn, dude. I'm excited. That's exciting. I'm not even a melee, but that's exciting. Okay, uh, we have Startling Strain Life Ancestral can no longer be applied on yourself. Okay, that's annoying, uh, but sure. The beneficial effects have been increased from 30% to 40%. All right, well, that's really good if you have a pocket healer, but if you don't have anyone constantly putting that on you, then that's kind of sucky. But anyway, Witchcraft, Innovate Gale, uh, Range Damage. Okay, so... Listen, I can read through these ones, but these are literally just... They've changed all of these skills so that they have a ranged melee or magic counterpart if they didn't already. So they all do the exact same thing, but see, Discord Wave does melee damage. Um, Discord Gale does range. Dis Dissonance Flame does melee. Dissonance Gale does range. Like, that's all these are. That's, that's the only difference between all these. So uh, go ahead and read through those if you want. And then we have part two of the Garden which is the second part of the garden update that they got in Korea a little bit after the first release. Sometimes in Arc Ages Pass, we have got multiple updates combined into one when they come over to the West, depending on what build the Korean group gives to the um, to Gamigo. But it we don't know for certain if this is what we're going to be getting yet, so I'm not going to go over the garden part two in today's video if we do get confirmation whether or not we're actually going to be getting this i will do a second part of this video where i go over the garden part two but nevertheless for this video that's all we're going to cover this is pretty much what we know we're going to get up to this point um and then 
we may get part two. So I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to go through and read part two. I'm not going to do it in this video because this is already like 40 minutes long. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm super excited for the garden update. I think the PvP in that new zone is going to be extremely fun. And I'm super excited for some of the changes. Uh, like balance changes coming and things like that. And also, the you know, all the new weapon specialization and stuff like that is going to be super fun. So... Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Or I'll see you in game over, on, uh, over in the old Garden of the Gods when that releases on the 11th of June. So thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.